Hello everyone, today I'm going to be going over the Flashbang Bra Holster made by Looper Law Enforcement. And um, it's a clamshell holster that fits over your gun and fits underneath of your bra, which we'll go over in a second. And uh, I've had this for quite a while and had some time to really get to, um, get to know it and play around with it. And um, you'll see a little bit more of that later. It comes in this plastic, um, it's just this regular plastic bag with a nice little color um, instruction manual here with um, how you adjust it and how you change the straps. It comes with three different lengths of straps, kind of a long, a medium, and short. It doesn't say it here on the instructions, but if uh, by chance you have a, a, um, a bra that, you know, maybe these just aren't long enough for, you can call them and get um, custom-made straps that will fit your particular bra and your holster, and you can also get them in different colors as well. Um, the it just um, to put it on, it just fits right around the um, kind of this middle portion of the bra here, and snaps down at the bottom like that. And as you can see, if you have a you know a wider a wider midsection there in your bra, obviously it's going to take a, a little bit of a wider um, or the longer strap. In the meantime, this particular one here is for um, the J frame here, and these are trainer guns, and to insert them in, I kind of like using um, the back of the firearm to kind of push it in and it just, as a clamshell, it just kind of hugs the firearm like that, protects the trigger guard. Um, for this particular model, I'm wearing the, um, the 238 model right now. And, um, but it, it protects not only the cylinder, if you have a J-frame, but also the slide for a, um, for a semi-automatic, protects the trigger guard and allows, um, for safe, safe carry. And then how it, how it is drawn is just straight down, the clamshell opens, the firearm comes out. Um, now as far as what things that this will accommodate, um, obviously because you're not looking at, um, you know, it's not a full holster that comes around the grip. Um, a lot of these will, out of the box, um, accommodate crimson trace grips. Some of them won't, depending on the, the style of, of um, laser that you have and the type of gun. So if you're not sure if your particular model of firearm, if you have crimson trace grips on it, you might want to call them and ask them, hey, I've got this particular gun with this particular um, laser sight. I know some of the... Um, the newer laser sights, especially for your small guns, have the laser mounted in front of the trigger guard. Uh, that that might need to be specifically asked for when you, um, in regards to laser grips. And, um, you know, some things that other people are specifically asked for are whether or not it has a reinforced mouth or, um, because this is a clamshell holster that's kind of already molded, it really doesn't need a, a reinforced mouth, but you are not going to get one-handed holstering out of this. Um, it's just not going to happen. You're going to need you're need, going to need to hold it as it's around the bra. Um, you know, you're going to need to hold it in place. As far as the quality of this holster is concerned, the leather straps are pretty decent leather straps. I mean, they're not thin by any means. They're they're a good quality. They're nice and strong. I've had this for a while. They're still really flexible. They haven't gotten brittle. Um, I've used a couple of different sizes of them, and um, I've been able to switch them around. The um, the cl the clasp here, the snap is the um, the one sided snap. It only comes off. There's a little a little notch here, so it only goes on and it only comes off one way. And the first couple of times you use this, you might have quite a hard time getting it off of your bra. Um, <laughs> it can actually be kind of interesting sitting there and um, trying to, you know, tug and tug and tug. But that's good because you know it's not just going to fall off. All right, since this is obviously a bra holster, it's meant to be carried right here underneath of your bra. I have um, the the um, model for the 238, the 6 hour 238. But um, the, it's not just limited to the bra. If you absolutely, um, if you want to get a little creative, you can use it as like an IWB um, and strap the, um, put the strap around like a belt buckle or, um, you know, you can move it around 
um, as many places as you can feel kind of be creative with it. Um, my recommendation would be to, you know, definitely get a dummy gun if you're going to wear it in a different location and practice drawing. Make sure that it will draw. Um, since it is that clamshell, you don't want it to get stuck in a place where you can't effectively draw from it. As far as dimensions are concerned, obviously the dimensions of the holster are really, really going to depend upon what type of firearm you use. Obviously, um, the, these are kind of made for your smaller firearms, although they do make them for the Glock 26 and um, a couple other mid-size to smaller frame firearms. Um, personally, I'm a pretty small person. I really couldn't do a, a Glock 26 very well. Even the J frame um, was a little thick and just kind of was starting to make things a little um, uneven in the breast area. So you're, you're typically going to be wanting these for your small firearms, your J frames, your 238s, your Caltex, um, you know, your P380s, those type of firearms. So they're going to be relatively small, um, you know, two, three inches. Um, thick and two, three inches wide at most, plus the um, um, plus the leather strap. There we go. And as far as thickness, this is a pretty nice, um, a very flexible kydex that is very, very thin, which makes for um, it's not adding a lot of bulk hardly at all. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit closer here so you can see that it really doesn't add a lot of bulk at all to the firearm. Um, you're looking at, you know, just a tiny little, basically a small sheath of kydex that's going to be going around the firearm. As far as retention is concerned, natural retention for these firearms is pretty good. Um, you know, you can, if you were running with this and it was attached to your body, it's not going to fall out. It's, it's in there pretty good. It pretty much does take um, a force or a really strong um, downward motion in order for the firearm to come out of this clamshell and because it is held close to the body um, that would have to be a significant amount of force to actually get the firearm out. So um, natural retention is pretty good for these and um, as far as stability, as far as testing stability is concerned, um, again I have the, uh, the 238 model on here. And um, it's meant to be worn as you see it, just kind of tucked up underneath of the, the cup of the bra here, and uh, which is why there is this stippling on the front of the firearm. It's just supposed to help a little bit um, with keeping that kind of tucked up so it, it stays like this. A lot of times it has a tendency, um, as you move around, as you, you know, maybe reach for things, it has a tendency to kind of pop out a little bit. Um, not that way, but pop out from under the bra, so it kind of is like this. And uh, I guess I could show you if um, if I'm moving around. This one's actually staying in place because this one's pretty thin. This one's a little round, um, so it has a little bit more of a tendency to do that than the um, than the flat guns do. This 238 is staying in place pretty well. But having worn this, I've worn this to um, um, my martial arts class that I go to. And um, it doesn't stay in place very long if you are in that active of an environment. If you're just walking around, sitting at the office, sitting at the house, or things like that, it's going to stay in place fairly well. But if you're out, um, you know, reaching for things, bending, um, picking things up, walking around, you'll likely find that it slips out. And when it slips out, it usually has a tendency to slip out like this. And uh, so it just comes out from, from behind. The firearm is still in its right spot. But um, the concealment, obviously, and all you have to do is just grab it and kind of tuck it back underneath of it, and um, then it's concealed again. And uh, this is the 238 model that I have been doing most of my practicing and drawing with with this holster. And I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a lot of wear around. Um, the trigger or the muzzle area and um, under here on both sides so and part of that has to do with the way that I have been drawing from the holster and we'll get more into that in a little bit um, I kind of want to call, call it more of like a tactical draw rather than just the um, the traditional 
or a modified draw, I'll call it a modified draw versus the traditional draw. Even with the traditional draw though, um, by via of what the the clamshell is, is, is you're going to get wear on your gun from the, from the clamshell opening and closing. So if you're gonna do a lot of practicing with drawing the firearm out of this holster, I would strongly recommend if you don't want a lot of um, a lot of marks on your gun, going ahead and getting a blue gun or a dummy gun that you won't really care about getting um, getting marred up so much. But I do strongly recommend you do do a lot of practice. Um, some people don't care if they get their gun um, marked up and that's fine. Just make sure it's unloaded when you're doing your practice. And then um, Looper recommends having the firearm, you know, load the firearm insert the firearm into the clamshell and then put it on your body um don't put it on don't put a loaded gun into it while it's already on your body um, because of the fumbling around you don't want to accidentally have a, a discharge now i'm going to show you the traditional way of drawing from the flashbang holster is shirt up grab the firearm with your shooting hand pull straight down and then up and present to fire um, which that is the um, kind of the recommended method and they recommend going and taking off the holster obviously if you're going to be doing any kind of practicing drawing um, you're not going to want to tr take it off every single time so what I do is um, you have to be kind of really careful to make sure that you're very cognizant of where your trigger finger is um, you know, orient the top of the firearm to the the widest part of the mouth and slip it in there and it should just snap in place and then tuck it back up underneath. This isn't a holster that's meant to you know take to the range and do a lot of shooting with. You're very likely not going to find a, a shooting school that's going to allow this type of holster like they wouldn't allow um, shoulder holsters or something like that. This is kind of a, a last ditch effort or deep concealment method of carry. Not something you're going to be using um, at a, at a shooting school or anything like that. So getting down your draw um, is going to <clears throat> be something you're going to be doing in the privacy of your own home. So again, that traditional draw is, you know, shirt up straight down like this. And I found that with this particular holster for the 238, um, it has a tendency to hang on to the muzzle of the gun just a little bit, not to a degree that would be, I'd say, detrimental, but, um, it just does a little bit more than like the uh, the J-frame, so just something to look at. Um, I might, if it gets to a point where I'm not happy with it, I might go ahead and just shear off just this very um, uh, tip portion here of the muzzle of the holster, but it's not something I'm really that worried about. But, um, you know, coming up as your, your traditional flashbang draw, and there's something that I have kind of... Um, developed with this holster. I, I like to call it the modified um, flashbang draw. And the problem, and I'm, you're going to see some clips of me doing this with my husband in my martial arts class. And um, the problem that I found with this particular draw, the traditional draw, is it can be stuffed, it can be um, held. And so when you think of a draw from a, a traditional holster where you come up to retention to protect your draw, I was thinking the same thing for this holster hand, you come up, pull the gun to the side, just like if you were in retention, and then pop it out of the holster, and I'm going slow, and uh, pop it out of the holster, kind of like that. If you go faster, the faster you go, the better it works. Um, so I'm going to try and do it pretty fast here and see if um, I can get that inertia to work, and uh, there we go. Um, I've come up with kind of a modified draw, and you're going to see the modified draw a little bit more in the following clip where I'm actually doing it in my martial arts class. But the modified draw is basically if you're stuck with one hand and you're defending yourself. If you think of a traditional draw as coming up into retention, we're kind of doing the same thing with the holster, um, coming up here. And the faster you do it, the better it works. Coming back to retention and popping the gun out. Um, I pulled it out from underneath my shirt only because I want you to see the gun, but it doesn't necessarily have to come out from underneath your shirt. You can shoot shoot through your shirt. So, um, and the the parts of this draw that are pretty important, and I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate on this one, is pulling that gun to the side, 
and then rotating it out. Um, And it's especially more important with the flat guns like this 238 because if you don't do the flick of the wrist, it can get hang hung up in the holster and it won't come out of the holster as, um, as cleanly as if you just pull it to the side. So you're going to grab, um, so you can see it here, you're going to grab, pull to the side, and then rotate out. So you can see how it kind of hung up on the muzzle there, and it wasn't until I rotated out that I popped it open. I really thought, um, after doing this particular draw, many, many times that I was going to end up seeing a crack here in the Kydex, but it has held up very well. I've done, um, this is the draw that I've been using most with the Flashbang holster, because I think it is a draw that I would want to implement more because um, I'm likely to have only one hand and not be able to do the traditional or even if I do this and I come down here it can be stuffed up. So I like the idea of having the firearm on um, target quicker doing the modified draw. So coming to the side and then rotating it out and having it right here at retention and you'll see more of that in just a second. Okay. Okay, so the first, the, the, the traditional flashbang draw, which is straight down and up, is, can be very applicable to distance kind of thing. If he's just going to be walking towards me, I have time to do the traditional flashbang draw. But if he's already up close and sees that I'm going for some kind of a, you know, the traditional draw is you pull one arm up, but if I have to be protecting my head from him and he's going to try to be hitting me or something, also, if I draw the gun down, he could trap it here against my stomach, which would be a big problem. However, if we reset and do a modified draw, which brings the gun to the side versus down, that allows me to get on point much faster. I might have to shoot through my shirt at this point, because obviously I don't have a shirt on the top, but I would rather shoot through my shirt and be on target than take the extra time to go underneath and possibly get my jaw stuffed or the firearm pin between me and him. This can also be the same if we're so close, if I try and pull down, it's not going to work. If I pull to the side, it's going to come out and I've got a really, really good shot here straight through pretty much his lungs and his heart. So, um, one thing to also think about when dealing with the flash bay is you do have, your gun is right up here under rib cage. So any kind of impact to the ground from the front, you're looking at possibly some broken ribs, you know, a lot of impact to the chest area. It's kind of a, a risk for whatever holster you take, you know, spine, hips, you know, you can have some internal damage there. But uh, just something to think about. And another thing we went over is if we're doing from the ground and he's in a mount, a low mount like this, I still have the time or the ability to do a, a, the traditional flashbang draw from the, from the bottom. However, if he is up, in a high mount, I might not be able to do that particular draw because I'm stuck here. His body is here. I can't get the gun down. Again, doing a modified draw to the side can get that out. And I have a pretty good shot here, again, going through those lungs and that heart there. semi-automatics that this is the revolver version. More so with the semi-automatics, you really want to do that flick of the wrist because the semi-automatics will get kind of caught up in here. And if you don't do that flick of the wrist, you might not get it out of the holster. It might hang up in the holster a little bit. But I've never had it hang up if I did the full rotation of the, of the wrist. Huge benefit of, here, stay, stay, stay up a little bit. The huge benefit of doing the cross and pull out in the, um, the modified draw, I'll just call it a modified draw, is instead of being, you know, the traditional draw is it comes down and then I bring it up on target. With the modified draw, I'm instantly on target. 
the moment I pull the gun to the side. I can shoot from here from kind of this high retention, or if I have time and distance, I can bring the firearm up to my sights. But the, the main point there is that I'm immediately on target instead of having to come up. And like I said, I'm going to have a shirt on over top of this, and that means I'm probably going to have to shirt, shoot through my shirt, but I'd rather put holes through my shirt than have holes in me. So, you know, if we're up in here, but it's something to be aware of. If you're shooting through your shirt and you've got a revolver, it's probably going to work out very well. But if you have a semi-automatic, you might end up jamming on the first shot. So you want to get that good first shot. You better use, be used to doing some uh, tap rack and maybe having to clear a, um, a jam or something after that first shot if you're running a semi-automatic. A revolver, you wouldn't have to worry about it. So this is obviously the revolver model. As far as concealment and comfort is concerned, I was very pleasantly surprised with how comfortable this holster is. It's um, the concealment, as you can see, I'm in a semi-fitted shirt, not totally fitted. If, you, if it were very fitted, obviously, you would see I do not have large breasts. Um, I have seen plenty of videos out there of people who do have a little bit of um, bustier chest that have been able to do a lot better as far as concealment. There's more of that shelf there. A little bit more of that firearm can be tucked up underneath of there. Um, there's also different ways to, um, to position this. You can turn it around so that it holds it just a little bit higher, or you can turn it down so that the, the grip comes down a little bit more. So depending on how deep you want that concealment, you can kind of customize it. Um, but the concealment is pretty good and the comfort is, is very surprising. Um, because these are made for your lighter firearms that don't have a lot of weight, you don't have to worry about extra strain. I know that some women who have large um, busts already, already have um, tension in their neck and in their shoulders from the extra weight on their chest. And the last thing they want to do is add any weight. But a good bra with um, you know, good supportive straps is going to eliminate that. And, you know, because these are usually light and very small firearms, you really aren't adding that much weight to your, um, to your bust area. But concealment is pretty good. Um, some women complain that the, the um, firearm makes them look a little lopsided. I haven't found that really too much with me because I don't have much to begin with, so there's not much to make lopsided. But, um... It's just something to consider for, for something that other people have said that they've had a, an issue with. Um, as far as likes and dislikes are concerned on this holster, I really do like um, that it's a holster that's made for women, um, specifically for women's needs, because, um, you know, let's face it, one of the most, uh, I guess, one of the most regular things that we wear is a bra. And if you can wear a bra, you can wear this holster, provided you have a, a good holster gun combination. Obviously, this is made for your smaller firearms. Well, you may be able to get a Glock 26 or something to fit in there and conceal decently. You're not going to get your larger frame firearms um, in there unless you are really uh, busty. So that, I guess, could be considered a downside if you just a downside if you are like me and really like to carry your larger frame, um, uh, higher capacity firearms. But at least you're going to have something there. You know, you're going to have that small uh, frame firearm that you're actually going to have on your person rather than in your bag or um, whatever. And you can wear this with a dress. You can wear this um, with maybe like a business suit or something that you couldn't get a traditional holster on. So that's a really good benefit. Is it going to forget fit everybody's needs? No, it's not. But it's an option out there for, um, you know, for people who just need that, you know, little push to carry, you know, something that they would normally either leave at home or put in their bag. Things I don't like about this holster, um, one thing I don't like about it is its lack of stability. Like I said, with any kind of, um, action, it's going to end up popping out eventually. And it's not really that big of a deal. You just grab it, you push it right back, back underneath of it, so it, it, it isn't really that detrimental a holster, but some people might find it to become a little annoying. I have not modified this holster in any way. I have um, thought about how I would modify it to maybe make it a little bit more secure, maybe a clip, maybe just even a stitch um, between the holster and just to keep it in place a little bit better. But I wanted to keep it as original as possible just to see how it was right out of the box. 
And um, with maybe, and other people have talked about modifications, such as putting some mold scan or something to give it a little bit more traction so it doesn't pop out. Um, it's just kind of the sky is the limit as far as your imagination, provided that it, it does not compromise the draw of the gun or, um, or even the reholstering of it. Um, so there are some other little modifications that I'm thinking I might eventually do to get it a little bit more stable so it doesn't pop out. Um, how well does it work for me? I think it works fairly well for me, even for the fact that considering that I am a very small chested individual. I have seen uh, reviews from larger chested individuals who have been able to conceal larger guns. Um, would I use this uh, in the future? Absolutely. I could definitely see myself using this, um, like I said, in, in cases where I would not be able to wear a traditional holster if I'm looking for something that's small and compact that I can put on there. Um, and would I recommend it? Absolutely I would recommend this. I would recommend this to anyone who's just looking for that little niche um, way to carry a firearm in um, other, when other options aren't available for you. So I would definitely recommend that women check this, this particular holster out and uh, just see what it, how it works out for them and um, how they feel about it. Again, these are made by Looper Law Enforcement, and you can find them on their website, um, or you can, which I'll put down in the description, by the way, and you can find these pretty much at any uh, holster retailer, you know, non-specific. I found them all over the web. All you have to do is just type in flashbang bra holster, and you can find these, you know, all over the place. And they generally retail for about $40. So, um, you know, the price range is, is pretty decent for someone who's just looking for a nice little, um, little holster. And uh, just as a quick primer, I also got this belt from them. This is the, um, I think this one's the Liberty Bell. And I am absolutely loving this belt. I'll probably do a better, um, more in-depth um, review on this particular. This is an, a very nice kind of feminine actual gun belt. But we'll get into that another day. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, please um, just leave a comment and let me know.